good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show called Let's Talk Possibility. I'm Talana Simpson, and in the studio with me is my co-host, Jack. Hi, guys. Welcome back. And Tim, our producer. And we've got the mentalist, Gilan Gorg. Good evening. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we want to talk tonight about potential. And, and I think read about this word is that we always throw around this term. You know, we all possess so much potential. And especially if you're in the, the human po- mm. you know, potential movements, we talk about this potential that, that us humans have. But what do we actually mean by it? And, yeah. and what is, is that potential? So we've asked him to come in and share some of his views because he has some interesting views about our potential because he's, I think, developed some skills and abilities that apparently we all have, but I don't <laughs> <laughs> we well, I'm not see. sure about that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so Gillian is actually known as a mentalist, and we were having quite an interesting conversation around what that is. Um, I know you, if your background, you've come from when you were really young, you were a magician and you were involved in, in some organizations like setting up ma- magician. I can't remember now. I know you told me once. But more lately, you've now become the, the founding partner of the John Maxwell team of coaches, speakers, and trainers, which is also a lot about potential and you specifically using your, your mentalist skills to, sh- to show people what, yeah. it, what, what is possible. Well, I, w- I want to know is what is a mentalist? What yeah, is so a let's mentalist? just start there. Uh, yeah, a mentalist is someone who does things with the mind. So um, like you mentioned, when I was really, really young, about five years old or so, um, my interest in magic grew because of my parents uh, bringing back little magic sets. Okay. And uh, obviously at that age, I, I didn't even know what mentalism was or that I had a knack for it. Uh, but it's what we call the allied art. So you have mentalism, mentalists and, and magicians, hypnotists. And so if you, if you sort of know one of them, you, you know, chances are you'll meet others. Okay. So as I grew older, I started to associate with mentalists. I started to learn techniques from mentalists from around the world and, uh, and psychologists. And I found that I had a, a knack towards mentalism, which is things to do with the mind. Okay. Uh, so, you know, things like reading what people may be thinking, certain mm-hmm. thoughts or influencing them to, to make certain decisions or predicting things that will happen. So this before. isn't specifically like card tricks and that kind of stuff. This is more finding out what people are thinking. That yeah, kind of you, won't, you won't find a mentalist making a coin disappear, for example. Yeah. Uh, so this is, is things with the mind. And uh, I employ techniques that I've learned throughout my life. Like I was mentioning to, to Lana earlier, uh, my grounding as a magician, I mean, you learn a lot of psychology. You learn a lot about people. Mm. You, uh, you know, when, when, you're doing, uh, when you're interacting with people um, and you're using certain psychology with them, you notice a lot of patterns. Okay. So that was actually a very good grounding for me to become a mentalist. Mm. So anyway, I use uh, techniques from uh, what I learned as a magician to uh, as a mentalist from uh, psychology, hypnosis. I use all different facets and showmanship ties it all together to create the experience of mentalism for people to actually show them that the mind is is a lot more complex and uh, has so much more power than we even know about. You know, it's it's limitless. Uh, in terms of the mentalist, let's say arena in South Africa, would you say there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who do it because we don't really hear about people who do that. Because um, I was. I yeah. was trying to find people or to look for people. And when Talana mentioned you, I was like, hey, there's actually somebody in South Africa who does yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah, there are not many of us globally, never mind yeah. in South Africa. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you'll struggle to find mentalists. Okay. Yeah. But uh, there, there are a couple of guys who dabble in it in different levels. Mm. Um, you know, my direction, I think, is unique to me in, in how I'm applying it and how I present it and what my goal is with mentalism which is really to, to use it to show people and give them positive messages and, and talk about potential and, and reaching your, put your potential. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, well, let's ask this question. What do you mean then by potential? Because to show people their potential, what does that mean? What are we talking about? You know, what, is, <laughs> what, are we, what, are we to, what are we trying to show them? Well, okay, firstly, when, when I chat to someone or when they see a show or if I'm doing a, a, you know, a talk for a company, for example, I'm not going to teach them how to become a mentalist. So I'm not gonna yeah. te- you're not going to learn to become a mind reader. All of a sudden, you're going to be walking around yeah. and saying to people, you forgot to switch the iron off. You know, you're not gonna, <laughs> it's not like that movie, What Women Want with Mel yeah. Gibson. You know, uh, you were, so, uh, you know, because I guess, yeah. So potential, so potential really is... Um, you know, w- when I present mentalism, it, it does show that, um, 
that we have abilities, you know, I'm tapping into abilities that I say we all possess. And by showing people that we are capable of a lot more mm. and then talking to them about certain ways that we can increase our own potential. And that's not necessarily teaching mentalism, um, but using mentalism to, to communicate messages. And, um, you know, we, we, our mind is such a positive, it's such a, a powerful tool. Mm. And, um, most of us don't know how to use it properly. Mm. And that's why you have so much stuff out there on personal development. Mm. People just aren't aware. And, uh, and the mind is, is sort of neutral. It's neither positive or negative. It's just very loyal to you. So depending on how you naturally use it and the habits that you that you've formed over the years, uh, your mind will deliver exactly what you ask it to. Mm. But most people don't really know how to use that uh, and how to get the most out of what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. So that's Sorry, that's actually quite a good point just to, to look quickly at the, the video for the show tonight um, because that's, I think, what, what Derek Sivers is trying to talk about. It's a TED video where he's talking about weird or, or just different. You're saying how, how we, we grow up with a way of thinking which influences our potential. And that is, like he's saying, I think, so much that, that we are conditioned. We've spoken about this in previous, in previous shows, shows yeah. and, that, and that how the way we've been brought up and the way we see the world show this so he Derek talks about some great examples there of um uh, the, the Chinese doctor mm. his job is to keep you healthy and you pay him every month to keep you healthy, keep you healthy. when you're not healthy you don't pay him whereas in the other side of the world in in western, the western culture world. we only when pay when you're sick then you pay him. <laughs> then you go to the doctor yeah, yeah. so it's a bit and of a flip a side way of, of of thinking mm. from how you've been exposed to to medicine and to exactly. doctors yeah yeah and that's the same i mean that you look at at um, you know there's a myriad of books out there about personalities and personality profiles and i think the key message when you learn that that everyone uh, is a certain personality type or is a combination of personality types and have certain traits you realize that people aren't wrong they're just different yeah. so although uh, you may be someone who's um you know, energetic and friendly and likes socializing and you meet someone who kind of is more organized and likes things in place and the picture on the wall must be straight. It doesn't mean that, oh, they're wrong and, and you know, they just need to relax a little bit and just forget about the picture. It just means that they're different. It makes them And so, on. yeah, and, and yeah. because mm -hmm. mentalism is, is very much around people and understanding yeah. people. Um, because once you understand them, that's the beginning of being able to influence them. So, um, you, you know, yeah. And another great example that Derek gives in his movie is he gives you a, world, a map of the world, but upside down. Mm. So he says it's you know it's still accurate. All the countries yeah. are there, and all the you know the shape and everything. It's just presented upside in down. A yeah, way. but it's still yeah. It's what I heard John same. Maxwell once call uh, um, kaleidoscope thinking. I think could be uh, you could use that that terminology that analogy in many different ways, but for what we're talking about here, it's the the kaleidoscope. You look through it, you know that little tube, and you see all mm. the little shapes and everything. And if you just rotate it a little bit, uh, the whole picture changes, changes, but you're still staring at the same thing. Mm. Mm. And so, if you just change your perspective a little bit, the whole picture can change. Like you said, the on the video he shows the map of the world upside down, and it's still just as correct. Mm. So yeah. So, so is that what you do then? Is like th through the the mentalism, through the the entertainment of it, is just showing people the another way of looking, or that? Um, yeah. I, I I would say um, creating more awareness. Yes. Mm. So it, you know, if you see the map of the world and it's upside down, uh, it may seem very foreign. But if you know how to um, position it in a way that you could understand it then obviously that awareness, you can then, you'll know how to read that map. Mm. So for example, if you know how to read someone's body language, um, then you'll be able to actually translate what someone is showing you, even though they may not be saying it with their words. Um, whereas if you didn't know about it, if you never had that awareness, then obviously you'd be completely oblivious. Would you say it gives you, let's say more, I don't want to say power or control, but it gives you more choice because if, if somebody has, well, if you're talking about body language, somebody acts in a certain way, if you were you didn't know anything about it, they could easily influence you. But if you m understand more about how they act, you can, you can actually act upon it instead of just taking it for what it is, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, you know, you talk about influence. We're all, 
we are all influencers. We're all influencing. If you all know time. someone, you're influencing them yeah. in some in some way. We have, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, some kind of exactly. We we have stronger influence for some people than mm. others. Mm. And of course, if you're if you're aware of things like body language, mm. uh, you'll be able to better understand that person. You'd be able to better um, connect with them. Mm. You'd be able to better influence them as well because mm. you would know what would be positive signals and negative signals. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, with things like body language, you can't fake it. So uh, you can only just be aware yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah you want to talk we're about going the book? through all our thought resources. So, yeah, the book tonight is um, the definitive book of body language by Ellen and Barbara, Barbara Pease. Yeah. Um, so, so anyone listening who, as we say, learning about body language is, is a useful skill in, in your relationship. Yeah. Um, I think it's important we just mentioned what you said earlier as well. You talk about body language, you talk about reading things, and it's all, it's all contextual as well. Yes. Um, especially when it comes to body language. You've got to understand what you're looking at, see the whole picture instead of just a, a piece of it. Um, yeah, so what's nice in this book, I mean, they go through every little piece. Like just opening out to how you wear your glasses. Do you peer over your glasses? Do you wear your glasses on your head? Do you so, so all the different ways of wearing your glasses. But as you say, the main point to think of it that I found very useful in the book is, is remembering that it's contextual, but mm. also it's clustering. Mm. So although they talk about things individually, they, they would say, um, the authors, that you've got to keep in mind that y- you need to look at the context with, within whatever is happening. The, thing that, the one that I come across so often is people say, if your arms are folded across you, you're closed. Yeah, but the AC could be right above you, blowing the, right onto yeah, you. Yeah, the so. air conditioning is on freezing. Yeah. I can tell you now I'm going to be closed. <laughs> 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 I close my body because I'm trying to keep warmth, not because I'm closed to, to it. So you have to look at the context yeah. and maybe yeah. look for a few other of the body language signs. But I think, as you said, also said, I think they said in the book as well, is d- doesn't lie. It's very hard to, to fake body language. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Especially and the some subtle, people do. subtle th- changes in a person's face and yeah some people do try and fake it yeah but unfortunately you know uh, body language is is the outward uh, call it outward expression of what our inner feelings are and our inner feelings will manifest itself in our body in all kinds of ways you know uh, subconsciously so for if you know what to look for it's very difficult to um to fake it, to if, fake it. you know to the obst- um, obstute uh, observer yeah yeah mm. what i want to get to is what do you use? Because you've got a lot of stuff. You look at your website. There's a lot of stuff like you bend spoons, you blow up bulbs, you you read people's minds. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell us a bit about that and, and specifically why do you use those kind of things? Uh, why do I use them for which well, area? If you're going to be bending a spoon, what, did, what are you trying to say to people? And, you know, yeah, what does it mean to yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah, what message are you trying to give across, yeah. I think? Okay. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you, you bring up the metal bending. Now, the, the metal bending is so different to everything else that I do in the show when it comes to reading people and, and so on. It's mm. like it's, it's vastly different. Um, it's, uh, it's formed of, if you want to call it, trade techniques and uh, things that I've le- been very fortunate to learn from, from other people mm-hmm. um, that is very closely guarded. Mm. So there's no real... Uh, practical lesson I can give from that uh, but I use it because I have a story behind the metal bending and okay. how I actually from a young age wanted to do it okay. um, and the journey you go through because when you're a young child and you're staring at a, at a spoon and it's doing nothing <laughs> and your friends are <laughs> laughing at you yeah. you know obviously so, so in my show for example if I do a show uh, uh, at a theater or a company or wherever where I'm doing my full act and, and I usually end on metal bending to give the message that um, never give up. Don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and that pretty much ends it with me then bending the metal in other people's hands, actually, wow. and and bringing random people from the audience up and, and having it happen. So wow. that's how I would use use that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. So there's all different messages that I try and communicate through using mentalism mm. um, to entertain and, okay. and put those messages across. Yeah. Now earlier you you asked Talana to write down a name, and we've. She written it down. Nobody saw it except she did. Uh, paper was ripped up. Yeah. Um, 
and she's got it next to her. Are you going to ask me to try and read her mind? I'm just going <laughs> to ask you, how far are you in terms of... <laughs> Jack, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I told you this is... It's, it's a it's, process. I, I tell you what, let's try something else first, okay. and, I, and I'll attempt that later because that is very, very difficult, okay? okay? And, uh, and I've been trying to watch Ilana and read certain things, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll try it. Okay. <laughs> but um, are you superstitious at all? I wouldn't say so, no. You wouldn't say so. Do you have a, uh, do you have a favorite number? What, what would be your, what is your, uh, your least favorite number from, say, uh, 1 to 10? Least favorite least number. Least favorite, yeah. Okay. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, you can tell us all. Three. Three is your least, you don't, that's usually someone's favorite. Oh. And, what, <laughs> and what would be, and what would be um, uh, any two-digit number, say, between 1 and 100? 10. 10. Okay, that's pretty low. Now, um, I want you to pick that up off the table. So fold a piece of paper. You, in fact, you can show it to the camera. Okay. Now, did I influence you in any way? Not at all. No, you didn't feel like I influenced you? No. So all the little seeds that I've thought that I've been planting the whole time. <laughs> so, so, that, so that piece of paper you picked up there has been folded in four. I want you to unfold it and read out loud exactly what has been written over there. Okay. You will say three and ten. Hold <laughs> 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 oh, that up second. <laughs> Look at that. You will say three and ten. So um, that's another side of mentalism is actually trying to awesome. predict what people <laughs> will say in advance or influencing them to say. So you have to ask yourself, did I, have I been planting seeds the last hour I've been with you? You probably have, I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and when I asked you that, you changed your mind a few times I as did, well. I did actually, yeah. yeah I, I did. saw that. I yeah. saw that. I wanted you to. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, that, that, is, uh, that is a side of mentalism. Okay, so well. I hope I've been able to, to show you something before yeah, I attempt the, so, the so name. So what I want to ask you then on that, because it's, it's, it's almost like from, from our perspective, like you, some people might always say you have supernatural powers. You know, how did you read his mind? How did you know, or, you know, make him come up with those things? So you say, you say that you don't have supernatural powers, but you have powers that all of us have. So what are those powers you, you're talking about? Yeah. Um, because I, I couldn't probably do that, so... <laughs> Well, you know it. It's um, I'm not psychic, like I mentioned to you guys, and and I really want to emphasise it because a lot of people think that you know they wonder do I border on spiritual or where where do I position myself? Yeah. You know, do I hear your voice in my head before I arrived here? Did I hear Jack's <laughs> voice saying I'll choose three and ten and you know wrote it down? Yeah. But um, I'm not psychic. Um, yet we still all have um, the ability to. You know, our minds, I mean, do you know that we've um, got about 250,000 different facial expressions that we can do? 250,000. 250,000. And subconsciously, okay. right now, you're picking up expressions from me. I'm picking up expressions from you. Mm. Your mind is processing things at, at an unbelievable rate. And so, obviously, if you know how to start interpreting things, and mm. you know, it's, it's a very vast field. So, I say that anyone can do it. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to you listen to this and tomorrow you're going to be reading minds and predicting yeah. people's numbers. Um, but it's just to plant the seed to say, you know what, our, our minds are such powerful tools yeah. and you can start learning to reach your potential and all the possibilities that, that, you, that you want from it if you just learn how to start using it. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so part of what, what you're saying is we have to learn how to use our mind, how to... The, the power of our thoughts and our thinking and, and that. It was interesting in the training I was at today, um, we were talking about how it was, it was training related to coaches, how coaches have the skills, but what was stopping the skills from being demonstrated was, was some kind of interference. So, so for me, what, what struck me then is sometimes it, we have to learn, the, learn an ability, so for example, but it might also be clearing away things that are, are stopping the natural ability to being, being there. And that's what I think, for me, is a point around potential. Is that we, we say we all have this potential. Yeah. So what's stopping it from, from being from out being there in the world? And sometimes it's just because we, we haven't maybe channeled it or decided to do it. And sometimes there may be interferences, the, the fear of success or failure, the, you know, the, the fears that are related to it. It doesn't mean you know, the potential's there. It just yeah. needs to come out somehow. Yeah. yeah. So as you say, so if we have the potential to, to do some of the things you're doing, it's just because... If we spent the time and energy like you have since five years old mm. developing these these skills, yeah, I mean I, I could also get Jack to come up with three and ten <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't don't you believe that you know we're all designed um 
to you know, achieve unbelievable things. And yet why do people still die with their dreams inside them? Mm. Yeah. Why? Mm. You know, so how so would you answer that? Why do you think people still die? Well, it, it, there's a lot of that. answers to that. I think it starts with belief, not in a religious sense, but belief in yourself. Mm. Um, you know, that, that is a major, major thing. Can you visualize yourself achieving all the things that you want to achieve? And, uh, you know, so w once you start developing your self-belief, obviously there's the more I find, the more that I develop, I, I do a lot of reading and the more I read and the more I learn, the less I feel I know. Yeah. You know so. Exactly. <laughs> it just opens up all these voids. Exactly. It's like climbing a pole, you know, and the higher you go on the pole, the more of, of the horizon you see, and, you know, and it seems yeah. further away and there's more to, to conquer. So um, certainly it, it has to start somewhere. I would say that, that um, having a vision and being able to believe in it And, and, you know, you already said some people are more scared of success mm. than failure because they think, wow, if, if I do this and I get a great response, I don't know if I could handle that pressure yeah. to then continue delivering, for example. Yeah. And so they would rather not attention. step into the opportunity that's right in front of them because mm. um, the possibility of that succeeding scares them so much mm. uh, because they're not sure yet what the next step will be. Um, but, you know, you, this is a long conversation, but obviously you've got to start developing yourself. And that is why I chose to, instead of just doing my shows for entertainment, to do things like becoming uh, a founding partner of the John Maxwell team. Uh, because I love John's material, things like uh, becoming a person of influence and uh, many people communicate, but few connect. All mm -hmm. these things have such a synergy with what I do as a mentalist mm -hmm. and what I relate to. So, um, Would you say that's unique about you in terms of being a mentalist? with regards to all the other ones, it makes you different from them? In terms of speakers? and Yeah, in terms of mentalists yeah. out there. Yes, yes. I, I don't know any other mentalists who, who have that interest and use mentalism in, to, that, kind of in, in that kind of way. Okay. Um, but even if there was, you know, obviously we'd have different interests and, mm. and some would maybe be more motivational. Mine is more about helping people to really find ways to connect with others okay. and to be, really become an authentic person of influence. Mm. Um, not in, it's very, you know, what I do as a mentalist in calling people up on stage and, uh, and interacting like what I did with you now, yeah. um, you know, that's not going to really help you in the real world. You know, people come up to me and they say, wow, I, I would be killer at sales if I could just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, use hypnosis, for example. And there's a huge difference between manipulation, you know, being a person of manipulation and being a person of influence. Yeah. Manipulation, um, Is, is usually for one person's benefit and the other person's yeah. loss, mm. you know? So it's and the intention. It, so exactly. It's the intention behind... It's the, it's the intention, but to become a, a real person of influence is, um, you know, there's certain laws and, and it's who you are on a day-to-day on -day basis and not mm. just being able to click your fingers and wave your hand and plant some suggestions in someone or, or read their thoughts. Yeah. Um, obviously, certain techniques help out there, but... Really, it's, it's about the core value. So, that, so that, that's my passion is to use mentalism to communicate that to people and to help people to really become people of influence in their lives, whether it's in business or relationships around you. So, and, and what's your reason behind that? Why do you want to help people become people of influence? I think at some stage, you know, it took me a while to get to that point. Um, starting off in entertainment when I was younger, obviously it was all about um, – Looking cool. You know, it, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> different phase, you know, when said was, how can I pick up girls? And, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But um, at some point you think to yourself, look, I've, I've got this talent, I've got this knack, I've got this ability, and why? And, and you ask yourself one day that very deep question of what is my purpose? Yeah. Uh, and what is really going to give me a level of satisfaction and make me feel like, um, like I'm accomplishing a mission? You know, mm. so for me, it was not just entertaining. Look, when I do my, my show just for the entertainment, like at a theater or what have you, people come up to me afterwards and they say they feel a lot more empowered. So that is very satisfying. But I yeah. wanted to take it to the next level. Okay. And that was by learning from people, the greats, you know, people like John Maxwell, for example, and then using mentalism to, co to communicate those messages. So wow. it just comes from a desire to... Um, to influence people positively, I guess. So yeah. it's a and, and the purpose of that, though, is... I think we the purpose of influencing people? Positively. Isn't that why we're here? I mean, what, are we here just to get stuff for ourselves and then we die? What, what do you leave? 
Mm. So by impacting people positively now, and they'll impact other people, yeah. and you have that whole multiplication process. But uh, uh, you know, effect, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we're like a passing grain of uh, of sand in in the hourglass. You yeah, know, so yeah. obviously we want to leave something. That that's the way I feel. That's yeah. my motivation behind it. Yeah. So what so is w- <laughs> what is what is possible for you? What is possible for me? Yeah. Wow, that is a that is a big question, mm. and um, I wish more people more people ask that because everyone's so focused on what's impossible, isn't it? Mm. And uh, and if we just ask ourselves what is possible, possible. and the question is what isn't possible? I yeah. mean, you know, obviously, I, I mean, it's not like I'm going to say, oh, I can defy gravity well, and <laughs> jump off a building. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, what is possible? Anything that I think of, yeah. uh, that I have the tools to to uh, visualize and create, you know. Um, I really think that if you can, uh, this is what I say with my metal bending, if you can see it and believe it, then you can achieve it. Mm. There's, there's a little line that I leave out there which I believe is important though, um, which is that you need to be able to have the tools. You know, which like I'm never going to be, um, I'm never going to be a great opera singer. <laughs> you know, no matter how much I visualize it, yeah. I'm never going to be a great opera singer. So you need to have the tools. And, and obviously, the more you develop yourself and the more you're able to work through other people, um, other people have talents that you don't, for example, then you can, you can achieve anything. So my answer to you is what is not possible? Nothing. Anything I think of. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. Well, we, we're coming to the end of the show, so we'd love to carry on this discussion. So you can find us on Facebook. Um, we can also tweet us, LT Possibility. You can also tweet um, Gilan directly. Yeah, yeah. It's at the I'm at the I'm the mentalist. Because mentalist. <laughs> yeah. he is the mentalist. Do you want Do you want to try the name thing before we say goodbye? Yes. So I I asked you to think of someone from your past. Yes. And you got that name in your mind. Yes. And uh, you haven't told it to anyone, no. and we haven't set anything up. Like I haven't, uh, I haven't whispered a name in your ear and said you have to tell it to me no. or anything like that. Okay, so um, I, I've, I've been trying to read you from across the table here, <laughs> and uh, you've been focusing on that name. It, it's someone from your past, and it's a it's a childhood friend, yes. and it's someone you knew that you were quite close to, yeah. and you were quite young. Yes. How old were you, roughly? Would you say about s- around six ish? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you say that this was like one of your best friends at the time? Because yes. I, I can definitely see that. But you don't you don't speak anymore, do you? No. Okay. It's been many years since you guys have spoken. Okay. So I'm going to take a shot at this. I want you to visualize this person in front of you, and I want you now. This is either going to make it or break it. Imagine actually calling their name. Don't move your lips or anything. <laughs> Just look at me and imagine calling that person's name out. It's a girl, right? Okay, you're visualizing <laughs> a girl. And um, did she have long hair? Mm-hmm. She did have long hair, good. Um, uh, uh, just imagine calling it out, like you're saying, hey, and then her name, okay? Is it two syllables? And, um, <laughs> and uh, does, it, does, it, does it end with a Y? Yeah. Like E at the end? <laughs> Um, just, just think of that word. Think of the name one more time in your mind. <laughs> shout it out in your mind. Are you thinking in your mind, hey, Mandy? Yes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> is it Mandy? <laughs> it is. <laughs> and that was your friend when you were six years old? Yes. Okay. Mandy, Mandy. if you're listening. <laughs> that is awesome. How's it Mandy if you're listening? That is awesome. So uh, I'm glad. Wow. I'm glad wow. that worked out. You put me on I've the spot there, you know. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that it doesn't always work out, and you saw how I struggled with that. So That was amazing. That was amazing. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yvonne, thank you so much for being here. Where can you find him? Yeah. Um, if you go to his website, uh, gilangork.com, um, you'll actually find his Twitter um, and Facebook links on there as well. Yeah. Um, Facebook is also I'm the mentalist and Twitter I'm the mentalist and Twitter mm. yes and but if you go to www.gilangork.com 
uh, all the links will be there. I have a whole bunch of videos. I, I have what I call Gilan Gork TV and I go around with uh, uh, different people in South Africa, celebrities and so on, filming uh, crazy mentalism with them and we post a video every couple of weeks. So we've got about 16 up at the moment. Amazing. Go check them out. Um, and yeah, it's been wonderful being here, guys. Show you anything at the moment? I have a show uh, coming up on the 24th of October mm. at Theatre on the Square in Santon City. It's a fundraiser it's for charity. All proceeds go to an organization called Headway. Uh, they help with, you know, people have head injuries and mm. car accidents and so on. Oh. And I'm, work, yeah. yeah, I'm doing that with Gareth Cliff, who's a patron of Headway. Excellent. So he's, he's hosting the evening. And uh, I, everything will be up on my website soon, but I believe it'll be about 200 rand a ticket and you'll, you'll purchase it through Headway. But I'll have all the details on my website oh, and all proceeds go to Headway. Yeah. yeah, we'll give a look. Let's give the address one last time. Sure, it's www.gilangork.com. That's G I L A N G O R K. That's my name. Dot com. And that'll take Great. you there. Yeah, thank you for messing with our heads. <laughs> I'm still blown away by this thing. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. and you got the name. That's awesome. And awesome. yeah, so follow us on LT Possibility. Give us some questions so we can ask Gilan off, off mm. air. And and yeah, our next show is in two weeks' time, Monday the seventeenth of October. And tomorrow Tomorrow's night is let's talk sports. Let's talk sports. Yeah, guys. Yeah, join us. Uh, be sure to to check in. And the you guys can interact on the show as well. Uh, ask us questions. Yeah, we, things, we'd so love that you come and come and while we live on on the Monday nights and ask us yeah. But thank chat. you once again, everybody. Tim, thank you. Talona, good on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you for and anything is possible. Till next time. Yeah.